This is Mark Karadimos from MathGuide.com. Today we're going to talk about the inscribed angle and arc relationship. In this video there's going to be five sections. In our first section we're going to talk about what is an inscribed angle. Number two, we're going to describe the relationship between an inscribed angle and its arc. Uh, and then in section three, we'll have problem one, section four, problem two, section five, problem three. Let's get started. All right, in this first section, we're going to talk about what an inscribed angle is. And I have a picture here of an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is one in which the vertex of the angle, that's the corner, is resting on the circle and the sides of the angle are chords of the circle. There you have it. There is our inscribed angle. Let's talk about the relationship, the specific relationship that ties together the measure of the inscribed angle and its intercepted arc. So the relationship says that if we have uh, an inscribed angle, it's equal to half the arc it intercepts. So uh, to understand this, we have to talk about a few points. So I'm going to highlight these points, make them large so we can see them. So let's say that this is angle ABC. Okay, so this is inscribed angle ABC. So if we have the measure of this arc, whatever the measure of this arc is, if I divide it by 2, which means to take half of it, that's what this angle right here is going to be equal to. So it's a fairly simple uh, relationship to understand. Just take half of the arc and it's equal to the inscribed angle. So we're going to use this relationship on three different problems that will follow. So this is our first problem that we're going to take a look at. And uh, this problem is a great problem because it ties together a few different relationships. And you kind of see the relationship between central angles and inscribed angles. So uh, we're looking right here at a central angle. It's a central angle because the center of the circle has a vertex. Okay, so this angle is right here at the center of the circle. So we know that it's 42 degrees. Well, an old property says that if the central angle is 42 degrees, then we also know that the arc is 42 degrees. Okay, so there's that relationship. There's a one-to-one -one relationship. And then we found out that the new relationship for inscribed angles and arcs is that if you take half of this arc, which is 21, that is equal to the inscribed angle. So the inscribed angle has to be 21 degrees. Okay, so it's a very simple problem. Uh, for this type of problem, I wanted you, the viewer, to see the relationship between central angles and inscribed angles. Okay, let's move on to our second problem. Here is our second problem. Within this problem, you can see that we have this equilateral triangle. That's what these little tick marks represent. That these segments, of course, are congruent to each other. So that means AB, BC, and segment AC are all congruent to each other. So we say that this uh, triangle has been circumscribed, or the triangle is inscribed within the circle, however you would like to look at it. So here we have a problem. What I want to do is demonstrate the relationship between these angles that are inside the triangle with the arcs that are on the circle. Okay, so what, what would happen in a problem? Uh, many times a problem like this would say solve for x, and they might put x inside here uh, as an angle. Or you may see a problem where the x is over here as an arc. It doesn't matter. You're going to see both of those places. You're going to see uh, the problem ask the problem solver to, to calculate those measures. So I'm going to leave the x off and just find all of them. So let's say that this problem was given to a student and you had to find one of those. Well, let's find them. So uh, first thing we should look at is that we do have uh, this equilateral triangle and if we have an equilateral triangle well, we know that if the sides are equal then we know that all these angles are equal to each other. 
Well, if all the angles are equal to each other, we do know that there's a relationship in geometry that says that uh, all the internal angles of a triangle have a sum of 180. So that means that all three of those angles have to add up to be 180 degrees. So using a little bit of algebra, we get 3x is equal to 180. We're going to divide both sides by 3, and we're going to get x is equal to 60 degrees. All right, so now we know that all these angles inside the triangle, all of those angles are equal to 60 degrees. Well, we also know that the relationship between the inscribed angle and the arc is that whatever the arc is, take half of it and you have the inscribed angle. So this inscribed angle, ACB, is opposite arc AB. So AB must have been 120 degrees because half of 120 is equal to 60 degrees. And it all works. So I could do the same mathematics over here. Since we know that this is 60, then we know that this arc is 120 degrees. And then, of course, we know for the same reason that this arc, BC, is 120 degrees. So all these arcs are equal. Now, this shouldn't really be a surprise because if you do have congruent chords, then the arcs that they intercept have to be congruent. So I know that a circle is 360 degrees. And if I did not know what these arcs were, I might want to be tempted to call one of those arcs equal to y. Since I know that they're, these chords are all congruent, I know that all of these arcs are all the same, so they all have to be equal to y. And the mathematics is going to look really simple. It's going to say y plus y plus y would be equal to 360 degrees because a whole circle is 360 degrees. So I would say that 3y equals 360 divided by 3, and I get 120. So we could have approached the problem that way to get 120 degrees for the arc as well. We didn't have to go from the angle to the arc. We could have just gone to the arc and then got the angle by taking half the arc. So there's two different ways we could have approached these pro this problem. Get the arc first and, get, and then go to the angle or like we just did, got the angle, and then go to the arc. All right, let's move on to our next problem. All right, here's our last problem, problem three. This is section five. So uh, let's take a look at this problem. So again, uh, for this particular problem, you may see uh, that in a problem like this would be devoid of all measurements. You could look at it. All we're given here is a diagram. And you could be asked to find a variety of things, like, for instance, find out what this angle x is. Okay, that's usually a very typical problem. So uh, it's pretty simple to do is that you'll notice that we do have a chord here. And this chord has its endpoints on the circle, and it travels through the center of the circle. That's what that dot represents, the center of the circle. So if you have a chord that runs through the center of the circle, it is a diameter. So it's a very special chord. Since that is the diameter, then we know it divides the circle into two equal parts. This t uh, part here at the top has got to be 180 degrees, and this one here at the bottom is 180. So diameters cut circles into two equal parts. 360 divided by 2 is 180. So that's where that 180 is coming from. So if this arc, right, from this point all the way to that point, if it's 180 degrees, then we know that this angle that inscribed angle, because it does have a point there, uh, uh, which is of course the chord of this angle. We have another chord. The vertex is on the circle. So yes, this is an inscribed angle. So this angle has to be half the arc. So half of that arc is equal to 90 degrees. So therefore, angle X has to be 90 degrees. Okay. So that is pretty simple to see that relationship. And sometimes what they do also for these types of problems is they even give you an additional piece of information. Let's say we also knew that this angle here is 20 degrees. And what you may be asked to find is, what's this angle? Uh, or maybe you're asked, what are the uh, arcs on this side 
Okay, well, if that is the case, you know that all three angles inside of a triangle have a sum of 180. So you would use that 180 relationship. So you would say that 20 plus 90 plus some other angle has got to be equal to 180 degrees. So you can see that this is 110. And you subtract 110 from both sides. And of course, you would get 70 degrees. So therefore, this uh, angle right here, which is another inscribed angle, is 70 degrees. Its opposite arc would therefore have to be 140, because half of 140 gives us the inscribed angle 70. And if we double the 20, we would get 40. It all works, right? Half of 40 is 20. We know that 40 plus 140 is 180, which is half the circle. So all these relationships are coming to pass. And we can see the relationships between this triangle, and the inscribed angles, and the respective arcs. Okay, so that was a bunch of problems and definitions here for inscribed angles. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, our other instructional videos, and our text-based lessons. Have a great day.